Hello everybody, my name is Boris and in this tutorial uh, we're going to talk about a new component in Ladybug called Solar Envelope Advanced. So I'm going to first talk about uh, what this component does and show the example and after that I'm going to go a bit deeper into the, the grasshopper definition and we'll take a look at the input parameters and the output parameters and see exactly how we can uh, tweak and manipulate the information and see how we can get it. So before we get started, I'm going to assume that you have familiarity with Grasshopper, you know how, how the components work, and also that you know a bit about Ladybug. If you don't know either Grasshopper or Ladybug, there are a lot of tutorials and video tutorials and other resources that you can take a look at. Um, and then you can come back here, but we're just going to assume that you know more or less how these things work and just to focus on this component. So to explain a bit about what the component actually does and to illustrate it here with the example, uh, if we have a site, uh, an urban site that we are building in, with uh, we have buildings and we have our typography and this red line here that you can see signifies where we can actually build. So what we're trying to address here is how we can define a 3D envelope or a border, not just a two-dimensional uh, like we can see here, but rather a three-dimensional border that takes into account the is that takes into account solar access, uh, which means that uh, we want to build in this place and we want all the surrounding buildings to receive uh, sun solar access and on critical times that we define and the result we can see here and I'm gonna explain a bit later is an envelope like this which basically means that under the conditions that we define uh, if we will build uh, below this envelope so all the way in here or, or lower these buildings these facades of these buildings will still have access to the Sun at the times that we define. So to achieve that, um, first of all, we have the standard um, ladybug components that we can use and we can zoom out here to see what I've defined. So uh, we can see here the, the sun path. So just a quick look at what's happening here, loading an EPW file, here defining uh, the input parameters. So we have um, the time restrictions, hours, days, months, and also here I set the definition that I want to take only the suns with the dry bulb temperature lower than 16 degrees and then we have a list of those relevant suns so what this component actually does is that for all of these suns all of these facades will get direct sun access if we will build uh, below and up to this 3D border that we have defined and that is what we call here solar rights. So we have another component here which is complementary and we're going to talk about it more at the end. So now hopefully the, the goal is clear and let's take a look at the component itself and see how we can change things around and to, to customize it and what options we have there. So here's a component and we can access it either from the ladybug panel and depending on when you're watching the video it would be either on the work in progress tab here or in the environmental analysis so just check in both of them and in any case you can double click and write solar yeah uh, ladybug solar envelope advanced and it's this component right here so um, let's take a look at the input parameters uh, we have the base surface, which is this line, which just defines where are we building, what is our site that we can build on. Um, then we have the obstacle curves. And for the obstacle curves, we will define the borders of the our surroundings. So it can be uh, buildings, it can be something else. If we want to define um, sun access to a garden, or street or anything else that we can think of and it also can be in different planes so it doesn't all have to be in the same plane for instance if this is a building but I want solar access just after the first floor so I can um, 
ra raise this line a bit higher, which means that um, by this definition, the this building will not be shaded just from that bottom border. So we can even have a, an example here. If we bring this line a bit higher, it takes a few seconds for the component to run, but if we focus on this part, it should go a bit higher. Um, yeah, and uh, I hope you could see that. Uh, because basically we have, if we go higher then then we'll still get sun access to the higher place. So we can be pretty um, specific about it and in that case we would get a, a bigger uh, volume here, like a, a higher solar envelope and then we can build higher up. But what's important to note here is that um, we should be careful when we're setting the obstacle curves just to things that are relevant for us. So that's part of the reason why it's still curves and we're not just taking the, the B-Rep of the, the buildings and, and doing it automatically. Um, this component can take a long time to run depending on the input parameters that we define. So it's better to have a more um, a clean uh, geometry here and that the curves will be longer. For instance, if this curve would actually be constructed out of 10 or 20 smaller curves, then it would, would take the component longer uh, to run. So we should define just the curves which signify the bottom borders of the facades or bottom borders of the, the place we want solar access to, but nothing besides that. So that's obstacle curves. Sun vectors is what we saw before, is what we get from the sunbed from Ladybug, uh, which is just signifies the relevant suns that we want to take into account. Um, now for grid size, we can take a look at it here. Um, grid size would mean how would mean how dense um, this grid will be. So the s the bigger the grid size will be, the less time it will take to calculate. So we can let's set it to eight, which is a pretty big number and we can see that it takes less time to run but it's uh, much more rough and if we set it to something like two and it will take a bit longer to run now yeah so that took a while but we can see that the the grid is very detailed and uh, we get more accurate results so it's really a matter of uh, how big our site is and how accurate we want the results to be so just play around with that. Just keep in mind that the smaller the grid size will be, the longer it will take to calculate. Uh, we'll just uh, return it to 5. And after that we have max height. Um, we're going to take a look at that in a few minutes. Envelope to run, we have two options, writes or collection. We're going to talk about solar collection in a minute as well. Um, number of CPUs here, we can also um, set it to a different number to run it in multiple processors uh, which can also save a lot of time uh, but also if we set it to one then it's just um, doing it in, in one processor and if you see that the component takes a long time to run maybe it's worth changing the values and seeing what works best for you and then just run it true or false which just sets the component to, to either run or not uh, for the output we have either the points and we can take a look at what we get here, just a list of uh, like a 3D point grid, or we get an envelope BREP, which is a poly surface um, that we can see here in the preview. So now when we saw um, the input and output parameters, um, let's take a look at the example a bit more closely. We can, we can see maybe a bit better what it does if, for instance, we take this building and then let's think about what can happen when we, for instance, move it to here. So we would expect something here to change. This could be a bit higher, this could be a bit lower. It takes a few seconds to run, but then we can see that the envelope is updated and then from this information we can kind of take this as a, as a starting point just to plan where we can build higher, where we can build lower and to justify that now let's see what happens when we don't have obstructions. 
So we'll take this building and we'll move it really far ahead, uh, really far away. So all this part, there are no buildings here that we have to take into account. So we can see that this area stays more or less the same, but here uh, it changes and it's really high. And that's where max height can, can come into play. So we can manually set what's the maximum height that we want uh, the envelope to have when we have no obstructions. So here we can see it's pretty high. If I'll set it now to about 20, then wait a few seconds, and then we'll see that the component looks like that. So we can say it doesn't matter uh, if we have obstructions or not, that's the highest that we can go. And then we can have uh, the shape that kind of makes more sense for us. So that's more or less what we get with the solar rights envelope. Now we have another envelope and we can see it here, which is called solar collection. It's exactly the same component, uh, but we have a few things that we want to change. And the envelope to run, if we'll change it here to solar collection, if you remember above it was solar rights, here it's solar collection, and we'll set it to true. Also wait a few seconds uh, to let it run and turn the preview on and turn this preview off so it'll be a bit easier to see um, so this component basically w when this is a setting it means that uh, this um, signifies the lowest limit from which we can build and what we're building will still get sun access given uh, these uh, specific uh, suns that we defined before so what it means for us is that uh, if I want to build here, then everything below this envelope will not get sun in those critical times. So the first component was concentrated on the environment, how our um, development uh, affects the environment. And the second component focuses on our building, how the environment uh, focuses on us. So a few things that are different here, apart from solar collection, basically everything is the same, but for the obstacle curves, now we would want to take the upper borders of the surrounding buildings and not the lower ones, because they are the, the borders that kind of that, uh, determine if we get access to sun or not. And the same word of caution, we should uh, know exactly what, what we're selecting here. Um, not to select too many curves uh, unless they are relevant because again it will make the calculation time longer so it's better before to start with a pretty easy geometry and then see that everything works and then make it making it a bit more uh, accurate or complex as you go along so basically these are the two uh, variations we have this component and if we join them together we can like in the juxtaposition, we can see that we have some places with an area in between. So the area in between means that, like if we build here, if you can understand that in the in the 3D view, then we will both, our building will get sun access and we will not interfere with our surrounding sun access. And so these two are kind of complementary. Another small thing, I'll just turn this off. If we run the solar rights envelope without the without the obstacle curves then we're just gonna take uh, the curves of the side and what that means is that if we will build uh, inside of this area then the our development will not overshade anything outside of it so that can be sometimes useful as well of course uh, these curves can also be manually put into obstacle curves, but if we don't, then automatically that's the result that we're getting. So that's more or less it. Um, that was the overview of the Solar Envelope's advanced component. If you have any questions or suggestions, or you run into a bug or anything like that, feel free to, to post that in the Ladybug group in the Grasshopper 3D website. And again, thanks for listening, and until next time.